In this video, we're going to talk about constructive solid geometries, and we'll develop a simple part using uh, primitive solid geometries like rectangular prisms and cylinders to create rounds and holes. To get started, let's go File, New, and we'll create a new part, and we'll hit OK. When SolidWorks opens a new part, we'll go down to the bottom and check our units. We're going to be working in millimeters for this document, so we can click millimeters here, or we can edit document units and double check we're in millimeters. And for our length, our decimal place should be at two. So if you need to adjust that, we don't need to be more accurate than two decimal places. And I'll hit OK. To get started, we'll go to our sketch menu. We'll click a new sketch and we'll sketch on the top plane. We're going to start with a rectangular shape. So we'll draw this in space and we'll go to our smart dimension. We'll click the edge of our part and the length of this is going to be 75 millimeters. The width of our part is going to be 50 millimeters. From here, we can quickly just align this corner to our origin and automate that geometric relationship. No coincident. I'll hit my green check and I'll exit my sketch. In my features tab, I will extrude. And the height of this part is 15 millimeters. I'll hit my check. And I've now just created a rectangular prism. Our next step is to create a cylinder that goes through the part and merges up to 40 millimeters. So let's select our sketch menu. We'll rotate our part a little bit and get to the bottom face. We'll click sketch and let's make sure we select that face. Be careful about your orientation and if it moves on you, you're welcome to adjust. We'll be creating a circle and we're going to draw it on this part right here. You can find the midpoint and then snap to the corner. And that should fix your entire geometry here. It's fully defined once we've done that. And you can off click and see that it's turned black. All we do is select that midpoint, coincident it there, and then coincident it to the edge of the part. I will exit my sketch, rotate my part back, and I will make an extrude. I want that to be a 40 millimeter extrude. And I also want it to go in the other direction. So I'm gonna flip the direction and make sure I check merge results so that it's one part. I'll hit the green checkbox. And I've now just created the first two parts of my constructive ship solid geometry, rectangular prism and a cylinder. We're now gonna use a cylinder to create a hole. So let's go to sketch. Let's sketch another uh, circle on top of this part. We'll select that face and we'll draw a circle right in the center of this part. If you can't find the center, if it won't let you reference that, you should hover over the edge and then you should be able to get that center point. That should save you some time. Now all we need to do is smart dimension the diameter. And that should be a 30 millimeter hole. Again, that's fully constrained. And when we rotate our part, we'll exit our sketch. We'll go to features and extrude. We're going to extrude cut. We want it to go 40 millimeters, but in reality, it'll be better if we just click through all. That way it's always going through our part if we decide to change our dimensions. So we'll hit check. And now we've just created a hole right through that cylinder on center. Let's stay in the features menu and we're going to click hole wizard. The hole that we're creating is just going to be a regular hole. So click the hole and where it says standard, well, we're in metric right now. So select ANSI metric. The type of hole is going to be a drill size. 
and we're going to create a 20 millimeter hole. So scroll down and find 20 millimeters. This is also going to be a through all. And for the near side countersinks, just uncheck that. And we'll move over to the positions tab. And it's asking us for the, the face. We'll click that face. It wants us to place the hole. So we'll click there and then we'll go to smart dimension. Now we can select the center of the hole to this edge. And we know that distance was 50 and we want to be in the middle. So we'll just divide by two. Again, on smart dimension, I'll select the center of this hole. I'll click my edge and that's going to be 30 millimeters in on center. Once we have all of our uh, values, we can hit check. Our position is done. We could add multiple holes if we wanted of the same type. Our type looks good. We're just going to hit check. We've now created sketches and a feature at the same time. And if we look, we can see it's actually created two sketches. One for the diameter of the hole, and then the other that is the profile of the cut. So if we wanted to cut our counter bores, that profile would change slightly. Our last step is to cut through into the hole on this side. So we're going to go to our sketch menu. We'll hit sketch. We'll select this face here. And then we're going to draw a rectangle. Hover over your line. Again, make sure it doesn't snap to a midpoint or an endpoint. And then find that bottom line. We'll smart dimension this top line to the diameter of that hole, which was 20 millimeters. Our next step is to dimension this point from the edge. And we know that that distance to center it has to be 50 minus the hole, which was 20. And then we're going to divide that by 2 since we want to split the difference. And that should be 15. That should center our hole really nice. And then we'll cut this all the way through here. So exit your sketch. Go to your features menu, extruded cut. We're going to cut that and where it says blind, change that to say up to surface and we'll click the inside of this hole and that makes sure we cut from right through there. We'll hit our check and we've now completed the basics of our part. We've used cylinders and rectangular prisms to make a fairly complex part with simple geometries. Don't forget to save your work and change your sketch and feature names before you finish.